If you create a lot of no-content or low-content books for Kindle Direct Publishing, it can be useful to have a reusable template in order to create your cover art at the correct dimensions without having to create a new document every time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the KDP cover template file and Photoshop to create a reusable cover art template. Begin by downloading the KDP paperback cover template from the KDP website, which I will link in the video description below. Select the trim size you'd like the template to be, enter the number of pages, and select your paper color, and then click Download Cover Template. It will then prompt you to save a zip file containing both a PDF and a PNG file of the template. Next, open the PNG file in Photoshop. On the template created by KDP, there are black dotted lines indicating the trim size of your cover art. This is where your cover art will be cut after it is printed. There is also a reddish orange area that indicates your bleed area. This is area that is too close to the trim point to include important information such as text, so you want to keep all artwork out of these two areas. The first thing I like to do when creating a reusable template is to add guides at each trim and bleed area. This helps me keep content out of these areas and also center content on each side of the cover and the spine. To add a new guide, go to your View menu and select New Guide. For guides that go up and down the page, you'll want a vertical guide. So for example, for this trim edge, I'll add a vertical guide at 0.125 inch. You can see a blue guide was added right on that trim edge. Now if you're not sure the dimension of the guide, you can always add a random percent that's close to where the guide is and then click and drag it to its spot. So for example, to add a guide at one of these spines, I'll go to View, New Guide, Vertical, and then 50%. This added a guide at 50% of the page, which I can then click and drag over to the trim edge. I will do this for each horizontal and vertical trim and bleed. These guidelines will enable me to see where my trim and bleed edges are, as well as my barcode once I start adding artwork on top of the template. So for example, if I add a background color to my layers, you can see I can no longer see the template, however I can still see where my spine, trim, and bleed edges are. The next thing I add to my reusable template is a title vertical in the spine. To do this, I click on the text tool in the toolbar, click anywhere on the document, add dummy text like my title, and then click the check mark to accept the text. I will then do Command T on a Mac or Control T on a Windows in order to go into transform mode. From here, I'll change the rotation by 90 degrees. The text is now vertical. Click the check mark to apply the transformation. In order to center the text in the spine, do Command A on a Mac or Control A on Windows in order to select the entire document. Then click the Move tool and click each of the Align Center icons. This is the Align Horizontal and the Align Vertical. Your title is now centered within your spine. If the font of your title is too big for the spine and extends into the bleed area, you'll need to make it smaller. To do this, go to your text layer and double click on the T. This will enter the text into edit mode. You can then change the font size from the menu. 
If the text is too small for you to see whether it fits within the spine area, double click on the magnifying glass in the toolbar to zoom in at 100%. As you can see, my font's a little too close to the bleed edge and may get rejected by KDP, so I may want to make it a little smaller. Because I use the same brand name or author name on most of my no content books, I like to add this to my reusable template. To do this, I select the text tool again, click on the back cover, and enter my brand name. And click the check mark to accept the text. I now want to select the viewable area of the back cover to center my text within that area. To do this, I'm going to use the square marquee tool on the toolbar and use my guidelines to select the area. To make sure that my selection is exactly on the guidelines, I'll go to View and make sure that Snap is enabled. If it's not, I'll click on Snap to enable the Snap mode. My selection will now snap to my guidelines to ensure my selection is accurate. I'll select the trim area of the back cover, click the Move icon, and then click Center Horizontally. I'll then click the bottom edge in order to move the brand name to the bottom. But now you'll see it's outside of the bleed area. So I'll turn off the selection by doing Command D on a Mac or Control D on a Windows computer, and then using my Move tool and my arrows to move my brand name up into the cover area. Now that brand name is a little small, so I want to increase the font size, but I don't want to go into the barcode area that's marked here by my guides. In order to do this, I'll go into Transformation Mode by using Command T on a Mac or Control T on Windows. I can now increase the width and height either by typing a value up here in the toolbar or by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging a corner as big as I can go until my brand name reaches the edge of the barcode. And then click Enter to apply the transformation. My file is now ready to be saved. I'll save it as a layered Photoshop document so that these text layers, as well as my background color layer, remain editable. I can then add additional text and graphics each time I create a new cover and save it as a new file. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you need to know to be successful on your KDP journey.